Laboratory 7 walkthrough. What we're going to do today in this laboratory, you're going to be experimenting with differential amplifiers. Please note, in Blackboard there's some additional links to the ORCAD frequently asked questions specifically for probe automatic measurements. So a lot of the work that I've talked about before is available here. Okay, let's have a look at the differential. There are two circuits that you're going to look at. A differential amplifier with differential input and differential output. So you're looking at the, the signal difference between those two. And we're going to test it to find out what um, the textbooks would say ADM, the differential voltage gain is. You're going to design for a particular task and then see what we get. We're then also going to test the common mode gain. So in this case we're short circuiting the two inputs and we're looking at a signal coming into both of them and we're measuring the output waveform. The specification is listed here. Supply voltage is plus and minus 10 volts. The DC input bias to the circuit is 1 volt DC. The AC input signal is 10 millivolts and the tail current is 2 milliamps. I want you to achieve a differential signal gain of 100. Figure 2 is exactly the same design but I want you to now measure the common mode gain. So your analyses should be all of the, uh, the schematic diagram showing me the DC bias points followed by a transient simulation showing me the DC and AC signal magnitudes, the differential voltage gain and the common mode gain. Then you can calculate the common mode rejection ratio. There's a little bit of additional work here on the bias circuit. Let's go to PowerPoint and let's start with a little bit of maths. Okay. Let's just note down... Oh, we've skipped a header frame. Let's go to my pointer options. Okay. Now what we have here, this DC source is providing the DC bias. Oh, what is going on there? It's providing the DC bias for your circuit. I've called that VDC. So you need to be careful with that. You have some resistors here, which will obviously drop some signal. Okay? And then you have your two output signals. As you can see, effectively, this sine wave source here at 10 millivolts is going to produce a sine wave here and the antiphase sine wave there. Okay? If I draw a little sketch, what you're effectively achieving here, we're creating a DC bias level. This is our supply, VCC, and down here would be VEE. Okay, and we're putting our sine wave on top of it, and our anti-sine wave on top of that. So that's the signal that's effectively being fed into the differential amplifier. We can control this DC level by shifting this number, and we can control the AC magnitude of that signal, this value here, or this peak value from DC here. Okay? I've set it to a very low value, 10 millivolts, and that's specific. Let's move on to the actual design. Okay, so what equations do we need to start with? Well, number one, we need to look at the DC coming in. Okay, that's coming in on both these two terms. I've called that V in DC. Okay, V in DC. If you know what that DC level is, 1 volt, and you know what the tail current is, IT, IC, Q1, is approximately IT over 2. Okay? So now you know the current coming through here. We can then calculate VBE. Okay? Uh, this will be Q1 or Q2 is equal to VT, natural log, IC over IS. Again, you can now calculate the volt drop, which gives you the potential at VE. Okay? We know the current flowing here, therefore you can calculate resistance. So R1 would be equal to VE. I'm sorry, my pen seems to be going a bit mad here. 
divided by it. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now what you need to do, you can go through the small signal equivalent model for this design. The small signal equivalent model, when you approximate to the half model, will look like this. Okay, here's our transistor. And here is our output. This value here will be R2 or R3. I'll call that the collective resistance. So these collectively are called RC. And this resistance down here is often called RT, the tail resistance. Okay. And this, of course, is RBE, our input signal. And here we have IB beta. And here we have IB. And our input signal, in this case, is enveloped here. Okay. Now we've already calculated the gain for this circuit. When you look at the differential, we can almost ignore this component down here because it just ends up as some sort of bias. AV, our calculation, works out at minus RC over RE. Okay? So all you need to do now is calculate the value of RC because we are given AV and we can easily calculate RE. RE, VT over IE. Okay? So that's quite straightforward. One thing that we will affect here, because we're calculating the value of RC based upon gain, we don't know what DC out is. In fact, we basically haven't got any control over it. Next circuit. What we're doing here, we're feeding the same signal into base and we're looking at the output signal. These values are 7, 8 and 6 are exactly the same as in the previous circuit. So you only do the calculation once. What I want you to measure here is V out CM A which is our common mode voltage out divide by V in A so that's our signal going into the circuit, and that should give us AV common mode. Textbooks will always say uh, ACM. Okay. Once you've calculated that, you can then calculate common mode rejection ratio, which is ADM divided by ACM, and then you could also put that into a log term. 20 log to the base 10 of CMRR ratio. So there's our two circuits and there's our design ready to go. What you now have to do is to build the design, take a little bit of care with what's going on in the DC bias and the output. You don't necessarily have to optimize to get it completely perfect. Let's just run it through and see what happens. Stage two could be get exactly the, ex the performance, exactly the tail currents, exactly the DC bias at the input. And then that will give you um, possibly a, a different value when you roll through to calculate your dB common mode rejection ratio. We're going to use this exact same circuit next week, but we're going to design uh, an improvement by using current sources. That's the end of this screen cam.